wanted to ask about Lucas Torreira. Obviously, we've seen the team news update this morning that he's mm. fractured his ankle. How is he since the, the news broke? He was quite positive this morning. I spoke with him. Uh, he was in pain. We don't really know exactly the extent of the injury. He needs to see the specialist tomorrow here in London, and we will know more about it. Positive news that um, Kieran Tierney's back in full training. You've yeah. already spoken about his phenomenal work rate. Mm. Do you think we could possibly see him back in action? I don't know. He's done uh, two or three complete uh, sessions now. He's feeling more and more confident now with contact around him, and uh, hopefully he will join in the squad soon. Hi, Hello. Um, how big an impact do you think the injuries have had on, on Arsenal performances this season and how close you are to, to getting Champions League qualification or not? We don't know. I could not tell you with points. Uh, for sure, since I joined, the amount of things that had happened is enormous. We just have to try to adapt. It's part of football. It doesn't only happen to us. Unfortunately, it happened to many other teams. So... We cannot be crying about that. It's what it is. Uh, sometimes it's bad luck. Sometimes it's part of the game we play. And uh, and sometimes things that we can avoid and do better as well. Sometimes like coaches or fitness coaches. But uh, it's what it is. Given how unpredictable this season has gone, you're five points off at the moment what looks like a top five finish will get Champions League. Mm. With 11 games to go, mm. how many points do you think realistically will it take to get into those positions? beat West Ham on Saturday and we are closer. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking because a few weeks ago it looked impossible and uh, if we beat West Ham it will look more likely. So that's the only aim is game by game we go and start grabbing three points and three points and three points and they will have a chance in the last three or four games of the season. You spoke earlier this week about the potential financial implications of not qualifying for a third season in a row. Mm. Just from your perspective, how difficult is it to plan not only long term mm. but short term, given that the Champions League qualification is at such a knife edge? Very difficult because I like everything very planned and detailed and it goes a little bit against uh, my principles but uh, we have to adapt on that sense again. Uh, I have very clear ideas what I would like to do in terms of the squad, in terms of some of the individuals, how we can improve the team but obviously the ideal case scenario, we don't know what it's going to be. It will depend on what we do this season. And as well, the, what happened the last few seasons is going to have a big impact as well. You've had no hesitation at all in playing the young players. Mm -hmm. Is there an element of looking ahead to the summer and a potential budget constraint that you might mm -hmm. have? Or is it simply, I'm playing them because they're ready? I have to manage the resources that I have at the moment and they are a big resource at the moment and not just because they are young and they can be good because they are really very good and some of them they can be phenomenal but they can only be phenomenal or very good if they play in a consistent way and we get them surrounded with good coaching with good club culture and as well with good players around them so we have to support them and ready to support them and and they responded last couple for me forgive me if you've been asked this before but mm -hmm. Danny Ceballos becoming more and more regular uh, under your stewardship. Mm. It's obviously just a loan. Has there been any moves to him, to, to mm. Real Madrid, about making that permanent, and do you want to do that? No, we haven't had any discussions um, about it. I'm really happy with Danny, what he's bringing to the team right now. Um, it took him a while since his injury to get to the level that he has, and I've seen in the past, and, uh, and he's performing much better now, and that's why he's playing much more games. I must ask you about an incident at the Tottenham match mm. last night with, with Eric Dyer. Can you understand, uh, as a former player, as a manager now, why he did what he did? I don't know. We have, without the full context and knowing the story and what happened, I cannot understand and I would <coughs> not like to judge any situation like this. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Mikel. Um, just wanted to ask you about Pablo Mari. Obviously, he had a really impressive debut against Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. uh, given that he played the full 90 minutes in that match, is he ready and fit enough to play another full 90 minutes this weekend? Well, um, he's recovered really well from the game. Uh, he played 45 minutes with Alan 23 four days uh, before that game. He played 90. He said he's physically good. He trained well. And, uh, and I think he's ready to play if we need to on, on Saturday again. And um, I'm assuming 
Pierre Emerick Aubameyang will be in the match day squad uh, for that game against West Ham. Uh, what's his reaction been like in training? How has he trained this week off the back of that uh, missed chance against Olympiacos? Yeah, he was down. He felt responsible about what happened, and we all tried to convince them that he's. You know, he got the, the best chance in the game, but he put us in that situation earlier. He's done it in many occasions this season and last season. And uh, we need him happy, smiling and full of energy. And uh, that's the way he looked the last few days. And uh, just oh, sorry. a question, sorry, on West Ham. Obviously, they've looked much more confident in the last two games. Mm. Um, how tough of a threat do you think they'll be, given that they are fighting against relegation, of course, so probably also want to get revenge on, on the way that you guys won. Yeah, they, they cause a lot of problems to big teams recently. You know, I know David, because I worked with him for seven years, I know how structured and organized he is. And, uh, and I'm sure he will put a team out there that is going to make life very difficult for us. They will compete, they will be physical. And uh, we need to use our resources, play our game, and, uh, and just think about performing. And that performance will bring uh, the points home. Mikel, well, you, you said you know David Moyes a, a long time. What have you taken from his managerial uh, situation that's made you the manager you are today? What's influenced you from his game? The thing that I admire most is the person, who he is, his values, how he deals with people, how he treats people, how he treated the players when we were there, how well he deal with creating a culture around a club, uh, a chemistry between the players and believe that we could do something as a team and then he works really hard he's extremely demanding he's got character Scottish character that uh, is impulsive and I really enjoy my time playing and then do you think he's got the credit he deserves he's been in the Premier League such a long time but over recent years it probably hasn't gone to plan as possibly as it should have. I think he had a lot of credit for the success he had at Everton obviously the Manchester United situation I think it was very harsh on him. Um, I know why he is as a manager, and my opinion hasn't changed at all. Did you speak to him before you took this job at all? Yeah, I spoke with him a few times, yeah. What did he say? Can we ask? Did he He's always been very supportive. Uh, he has a great belief in me, and, and we maintain a really good relationship. And will you meet him for a drink after the match? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and just one on Aubameyang, is there any plans... To to sit down with him at some point in the next few weeks and talk about We will have to do that at some stage before the end of the season, for sure. And uh, I will see the, um, the intentions that we have, his intentions, where we are sitting in that moment. I think it's difficult to predict that context right now. And it would be easier for you if you had Champions League football, I suppose. For me, it's very easy. I want to keep him <laughs> in any circumstances. Thank you. Mikko, can I just ask, in terms of the Man City game being rearranged for short notice, mm. it's left a lot of fans frustrated. Do you feel mm. sympathy with that? Absolutely. I think um, the ones that I pay the price for is our fans. Uh, no time to plan. Um, it's what it is. We could not do anything about it. Even for us, it wasn't the right day to play that game for the schedule that we have. But uh, we don't make those decisions. We will try to support the fans as much as possible and give them everything they need to to be able to travel to Manchester and support the team. But as you said, it's not ideal. Just to confirm, that was a Premier League decision, not an Arsenal decision, obviously. Yeah. Did Arsenal fight against it at all? No, we tried to expose uh, the dates and the, and the moments that it was better and it suited more and it made more sense. But at the end of the day, they have uh, some games that they have to fit in and, and they have to protect themselves and find a way. Has the date left you frustrated at all? It's what it is. <laughs> we am so used to this. They made the decision. We have to accept the plan quickly, how we're going to do that, when we're going to travel, hotels, everything, logistics, and uh, and focus on Saturday, which is the important game. Anything else for the broadcast section?